Today we're in the Magic Arena to see if we can hard lock our opponent with Phyrexian on Life and Solemnity and then finish the game by going infinite with Exquisite Blood and Segwit Bod. Alright, so here is our Phyrexian Unlifelock Sanguine Bond Exquisite Blood combo deck, and I'm pretty excited for this one because you might remember a while ago we were teaching Arena Zoomers about hard locks and chalices, and one of our big hard locks was nine lives with Solemnity. So the idea is nine lives, if you take damage, it gets a counter, then you play Solemnity, so nothing can get counters, you can never die to damage. The problem is nine lives has one really big drawback. If it leaves the battlefield, you straight up lose the game, and there are cards that C play that can just get it off the battlefield, even though it has X proof, Ugins and Farewells and some Edicts. But now we got, thanks to the Enchanted Tales and Wilds of Eldraine, a huge upgrade in Phyrexian Unlife. So Phyrexian Unlife, it does everything Nine Lives does, basically makes it so uh, we don't lose the game to damage alongside Solemnity. But if it leaves the battlefield, we don't really care. We don't lose the game or anything like that. So the main goal of our deck is to stick a Phyrexian Unlife with Solemnity so we can never die to damage. And then we have a bunch of card draw to find our piece. Is we're kind of an enchantress deck. We got Sethis and Enchantress's presence, which helps us dig through our deck and find our combo pieces. And then to close out the game, we have another brand new to Arena combo, an Exquisite Blood in Sanguine Bond. So you've maybe seen this in Commander before. Exquisite Blood says, whenever opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Sanguine Bond says, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So if we get both of these on the battlefield and either make our opponent lose a life or we gain a life, we start this loop where Exquisite Blood triggers, which triggers Sanguine Bond, which triggers Exquisite Blood, Blood, sanguine bond, exquisite blood, sanguine bond, until our opponent loses all of their life and we win the game on the spot. And one of the really cool things about this deck is we have a really easy way to start the combo. Remember, just having these two cards on the battlefield doesn't actually do anything. We either need to have our opponent lose life or gain life to start it. Sethis is the perfect way to start the combo because whenever we cast an enchantment spell, we not only draw a card, but we gain a life. So ideally we'll have a Sethis, we'll have our combo, we cast any random enchantment, we start the infinite loop and win the game. And that's the goal of our deck. The rest of our deck, we got a bunch of Ramp and Sanctum Weaver, Utopia Sprawls, Turtling Grove, Tutors Upper Pieces, Protects Our Enchantments. Leyline of Sanctity initially was in the sideboard, but there's so many Thawseize decks right now in Historic that it's in the main deck and actually really good. Leyline Binding for some removal. Mana base, pretty typical stuff outside of some Triumphs to turn on our Leyline Bindings in the sideboard. A bunch more ways to protect our combo, a bunch more removal, some Graveyard Hate, and that is our Phyrexian Unlife Lock Sanguine Bond Exquisite Blood Combo deck. That's our against the odds deck for today. So let's jump into some games and see what we can do with this deck. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy it and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor Card Kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. All right, it is Frexine on Lifetime. We are <laughs> trying to, uh, ooh. Oh God, okay, we will keep this. I mean, we don't have a ley line, so we might just get wrecked by Thought Seizes, but uh, we got the full combo in hand, along with a Sethus and a Sanctum Weaver. This is the kind of hand we want. Although, like I said, ooh, Kaiba Reckoner Raid, interesting. Well, play a land, we're gonna run out. We're gonna run out Sethus and hope it lives. My hopes are not super high that it's going to live, but we're gonna try it. Maybe they're just like Mono Black Aggro? Rakdos. And Hopeless Nightmare. Sanguine Bond for now. And opponent. All right, does kill the Sethis. Well, Woodland Cemetery, Solemnity. This will keep the Raid Reckon from ever flipping. So now I guess we're looking for Phyrexian on life. Static Discharge, sure. And Blood Crypt untapped. And skewer the, wow, Leyline totally. Well, okay, that's also good. <laughs> I mean, Leyline would be good, but you know what else is good? Solemnity with Phyrexian on life. Opponent, do you have enchantment removal in your Rakdos deck? It's 2023, so it's theoretically possible. I would say unlikely. Yeah, that is, it is pretty nice. All right, Muffin. All right, Muffin, can you burn your way through a Phyrexian on life Solemnity lock? Bump in the night. That actually does damage us. So the way this works, it's kind of like the nine lives limited lock, but like so much better. Wow, and there's a ley line. Um, yeah, let's add that to the to the mix. It's kind of like nine lives limited, but it's like a million times better. The biggest thing is nine lives, if it leaves a battlefield, you just straight up die. Uh Phyrexian on life does not care about that. Two, decline. Decline. 
Eh, you can just have all of them, doesn't really matter. It's also just a, a better form of a lock. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Yeah, let's uh, get down Exquisite Blood. I mean, I think we have just won this game. I would be surprised if our opponent had a way to get out of this. Going to get in, exile the Sethus, hit us to two. Well, play a Sanctum Weaver. Play another Sanctum Weaver. Pass the turn. Our opponent's at 43 guards, we're at 47, so if it does, Mm hmm Oh, all right, sure. So Mount Doom, sack legendary artifact, destroy all creatures, that's fine. It doesn't actually break out of the lock. The other thing that's nice about this is it doesn't care about Bone Crusher Giant. That's the other, the other big upside. We don't lose a game for having zero or less life. The damage is as dealt as though it had in fact. So rather than preventing the damage, Rather than preventing the damage, this just uh, shifts it to infect, which is actually way better. And we will pass the turn. I don't know if we're teaching arena zoomers in this in this video or not. I haven't decided. Hive of the eye tyrant. So opponent's gonna get us to negative life. In theory, this means if our opponent can remove Frexing on life, we die. I'm hoping that because they're Rakdos, they should not be able to remove it, but you never know. Could use some card draw. We have eight Enchantress effects, uh, effects in our deck. We're down one Sethus, but we could really use another one. Oh, own it. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. All of this does nothing. Yeah, yeah, still at negative four. Still not getting poison counters. Beat away, friend, beat away. We will take all your attacks. Just don't kill the Unlife. Hey, good game to you. All right, opponent realized we are never going to die. <laughs> And never going to die is just as good as winning. Uh, we'll discard. We'll discard a land. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. You're like, sure, we'll take the two. Go to negative six. If we can find a Sterling Grove, then it's like fully locked. Because then they can't kill. Then they can't kill our uh, our lock pieces. Although they might have feed the swarm in the sideboard. That seems possible. But in the main deck, I would be surprised if they actually had an answer. All right, another hopeless nightmare. I mean, our opponent can do this all day. It just doesn't do anything. I mean, I guess we might as well just empty our hand. I was trying to hold on to stuff in case we drew a Sethus so we could play it and draw cards, but no blocks. <laughs> opponent passes. Well, we will play Leyline of Sanctity. Uh, let's tap this for white. Cycle. Oh, please don't hit our other combo piece. We have one more polluted bonds. This would be the one time not. Hey, there we go. Okay. So now we have some card draw. So now we should be good. We will eventually find the Sanguine Bond. And once we find the Sanguine Bond, then we combo kill. Well, pass the turn. <laughs> opponent, another Hopeless Nightmare. I mean, our opponent has this cute little loop with Hopeless Nightmare where they can keep doing this every turn. It just doesn't mean anything. Like right now we win by our opponent milling out. That's gonna go away once we start drawing cards. So we're gonna be more committed to the combo, but I think it's worth it. I don't like our opponent looking at, you can see them hovering the Frexion on life. Watch them actually have a way to kill it. That would be the, that would be the saddest. I guess like Karn, no, they can't play Karn because Luris. Yeah, I don't know. All right, gonna skewer the Sanctum Weaver, sure. About it. Passes. Play the land past the turn. <laughs> Why is our opponent not giving up? That's the part that concerns me. Like, if our opponent is 100% dead, why don't they just scoop? Luris doesn't do anything. Opponent passes. Well, there's a Sethus. Play a Sethus, draw a card. I wish we could find a Sterling Grove. Enchantress's presence. A bonus, Sacks the Hopeless Nightmare. Does some scrying. The bigger issue is there could be a time when we draw the Polluted Bond. We gotta make sure we don't have to discard it. That's the one thing. We can't draw it and discard it. That would be bad, because we do need the combo to win. And the combo is a Sethus and an Exquisite Blood. All right, there's a hopeless nightmare again. Yeah, opponent can do this all day. We discard the land. Were they passing? Do we untap with Sethus? Wow, we do. Well, okay, Solemnity. Okay, there's the Sterling Grove. That's, that's a big one. Sterling Grove, draw some cards. Utopia Sprawl. 
draw some cards. Put it on, really doesn't matter. Uh, let's go green. All right, play the planes, pass the turd. Now we just win in two turns. Our opponent can no longer target us. They no longer target anything except the Sterling Grove. Next turn, we can get down two more Sterling Groves. And then we just tutor up the polluted bonds and combo kill the following turn. That's the that's the game plan. The, that poor Okaiba Ray, I reckon Ray just not gonna flip. Not gonna do it. Not going to do it. Hopeless nightmare. Again. Well, we'll discard this solemnity. Actually, yeah, we'll discard solemnity. We don't need another Solemnity. Opponent, gonna pass. Okay, so now, Sterling Grove, draw two cards. This should actually do, ooh, ooh. Oh, it's another Exquisite Blood, all right? That's not as important. Uh, Sterling Grove, draw some cards. Lair of the Hydra. 20 cards in our deck. Yeah, we don't really need to draw more. Let's just, uh, let's just pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent sacks the hopeless nightmare. Now we are fully protected. Now a feed the swarm doesn't even matter. Our opponent would need. I don't actually know what card they could have in their deck that would that would get them out of this. Discard, discard, discard. I don't think there's a card that they could have in Allura's deck that gets out from under this, but I guess we'll see. Alright, now we will sack the Sterling Grove. Get our Sanguine Bond. Untap. Play the Sanguine Bond. Wow, I think we got there. I mean, that was really the Frexine Unlife that let us live long enough to do this. And then we just play another Sterling Grove. And the fun begins. So we gain a life with Sethis, which triggers Sanguine Bond to make our opponent lose a life, which will trigger the Exquisite Blood for us to gain a life. And now this just keeps going until our opponent dies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. That was uh, that was a good one. That was a very good one. One thing we learned playing that is our opponent's like a burn deck, and along with the unlife lock being absurd, leyline just seems absurd. Like leyline all by itself seems ridiculous against our opponent's deck. I don't even know if we change anything. We might just literally run it back. This might be the best the best setup. Uh, yeah, that is. I mean, I really like the exquisite bud sanguine bond combo. is a is a pretty sweet finisher for this deck. That just you don't have to wait. You don't got to build a board. You don't have to care about rest. As soon as you get it assembled and gain a life, it just the game ends. <sighs> I mean, we're gonna keep this. We might get thought seized into oblivion, but this is a good this is a good hand, and it's a great hand if we don't get thought seized. The only thing we're missing is a ley line. Ley line seems really good against our opponent's deck, but. Opponent blood crypt untapped and bump in the night. Well, not a thought sees. Uh, untap land, Utopia Sprawl. On white. Fraxine on life's gonna be decent even before we we assemble the lock. Static discharge down to 12. Is there any way we lose this turn? If we go to 10, I don't think so. Let's uh, let's go to 10, play Enchantress's presence. Next turn we get down the unlife. Ramen Amp Ruins. All right, Reckon Raid pings us. Down to nine. And Skewer down to six. Well, yeah, play the Unlife draw card. Wow, opponent just cannot beat, oh wow, there's the Solemnity too. <laughs> yeah, this seems like a really, really good matchup. <laughs> opponent, play with Fire down to four. I mean, the thing, the way that this is worded, we get like, it's gonna take 10 more burn spells for our opponent to kill us now, which is just a ridiculously huge number. Opponent Mount Doom. And, all right, grabs the Luris. Let's play the untap land down to one. Play Sathis. Play another Enchantress's Presence. Pass the turn. Opponent gonna flip their saga. And Raymond Amp ruins and Alurus. Uh well, play Sanctum Weaver. Draw eight few cards. Now we're mostly looking for combo pieces. Actually, yeah, let's just a uh, ley line. Ley line seems good here. So now our opponent can't even target us with the burn that they draw. No attacks. Discard, discard. Actually, discard shocks. 
The one downside of this is once we're at negative life, our shocks are always gonna play, uh, come into play tapped. You can't pay life that you don't have, even if you have a frag scene on life. All right, there goes the Sathis, sure. Goes attacking, no blocks. Into the negatives. Well, play Sathis. Draw a couple of cards. Play Utopia's Brawl. Draw a few cards. Put it on white. We haven't had any combo pieces yet. Green, green, white. Another Enchantress's presence. Draw some cards. All right, there's a there's a combo piece. Exquisite Blood. Draw some cards. Exquisite Blood. <laughs> Pona seems to be enjoying themselves. Draw some cards. And let's play a tap land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Discard a bunch of stuff. I mean, we should be like a turn. We should win this turn, honestly. If we have the Sanctum Weaver, we should just be able to draw enough cards that we find we find the win. We will take the beats <laughs> back down to negative two. I mean, the combo's coming. I mean, I guess it's guaranteed to come this turn because a Sterling Grove opponent plays a land. We don't actually have the Slim Needy at the moment, so they can deal poison counters to us. Oh, that's the other thing. The life gain is helpful. So let's play Sterling Grove. So either we just straight up draw. All right, so we don't draw it, but we can pay one, sack it. Take the Sanguine Bond. Play Utopia Sprawl to draw the Sanguine Bond. I feel like we're about to get Robin up. Your opponent just wants to get that poison counter. This is your chance. You can give us a poison counter opponent. <laughs> you did it. You did it, yes. <laughs> So we draw the Sanguine Bond and a bunch of other stuff. Put it on black. Play the Sanguine Bond. Draw some cards. And, last but not least, make some white mana. Play a Lane Line of Sanctity. And now the fun begins. <laughs> and opponent takes one, we gain one, they take one, and uh, yeah, that looks like the game to me. <laughs> Ooh, Phyrexian Unlife is so good. It's so good. And now, wait, why are, oh, we have two Exquisite Bloods. So we're gaining infinite life to go along with our, <laughs> our infinite death. Yeah, that uh, that was a good Leyline matchup. I'm starting to think that Leyline might just be a really good main deck card in this format. Abonant <laughs> scoops it up. Yeah, Leyline, Leyline seems really good. It's like good against Burn. It's good against Thoughtseize. Initially, when I was working on this deck, I had it in the sideboard, but I moved it to the to the main deck. And yeah, there's some matchups where it comes out, but in general, I've been pretty happy with it. So that was that was a full combo. Got the Sanguine Bond. Got the Phyrexine Unlife. Showing the power of the Enchanted Tales. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Ooh. All right. Please be a. <laughs> Please be a thought seize deck. This hand's a little janky. We got exquisite blood, so we have half of our combo. We can't play Sethis yet, which is awkward. In some matchups, though, Leyland of Sanctity is just absurd because thought seize and Inquisition are so popular. Oh, black deck. All right, good, good, good. Uh, we would like to draw white mana for Sethis. Our Leyland is probably doing work. One thing I love about this deck is oh. Let's play Woodland Cemetery. One thing I love about this deck is it accidentally hates on a lot of the most popular cards in the format. Whenever one of our creatures you can roll dry, you have to card from its spell book. Well, there's very slow white mana. Well, play the slow white mana. I hope this Sorn doesn't wreck us too hard. A bonnet, the world tree, takes up Sorin. <sighs> Let's just play Solemnity, I think. Play the Woodland Cemetery. We can't get value out of this Sethis yet. Thankfully, our opponent hasn't been doing... All right, another Sorin. Thankfully, our opponent hasn't been doing much with this Sorin. Takes up Vampire of the Dire Moon. Sure. All right, gonna take it up. Doesn't actually do anything. Well, now we can play the land untapped. Play Sethis. 
probably going to die to this Soren, but at least it makes our opponent take it down. Wow, opponent's like a super friend deck, okay. Interesting, that is a lot of Planeswalkers. Opponent gonna take up Soren. Why are they playing World Tree? Why are they not taking the card with Soren? I'm gonna kill the Sethus, I assume. And they get a card from the spell book. I <laughs> have no idea what our opponent's up to, but it's kind of working. Opponent gets something. I mean, if we can find Frexine Unlife, we just lock him. Another Sethus, another land. Well, let's play Exquisite Blood, play a Godless Shrine. We really need something to play with the Sethus to start drawing guards. Opponent gonna take up the sword. Hilariously though, our opponent like can't target us with any of this stuff. This ley line's doing some serious work. Opponent draws a card, we gain a life. Okay, Karn, that's a bit of an issue. Gonna tutor. So opponent's just like mono black super friends? All right, gets a Golos. Yeah, I guess that makes the world tree make more sense. All right, so Golos gonna get a land. I mean, we actually might be in trouble here because of Golos. Our opponent can start spinning to win and uh, that is not good for us. <laughs> that is bad news about it. What do you got? Gonna take up the Soren. Wow, we are so close. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play the land. Play Sanguine Bond. Pass the turn. So if our opponent loses a life in any way, like by taking up this lull, they lose the game. Karn, doing Karn things. Ether Flux Reservoir, okay. Golos, gonna spin. Revenge of Ravens. The, I think we actually win this. I think we actually end up winning this. Aetherflux Reservoir, sure, sure, sure. Revenge of Ravens, sure, sure, sure. Derevi. <laughs> we did nothing and our opponent played five Planeswalkers and I'm pretty sure we just combo kill them. Activating this card, I don't know what it does, but I can't imagine it gets our opponent out of this. Okay, Emblem, creatures get negative one. Negative one spells you control cost one less to cast. Okay. Oh, you're gonna die. Oh, you're gonna die. Ah! <laughs> you did this to yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Opponent did it to themselves. Oh my God, that was so good. Wow, that was like the slowest, clunkiest draw. We just naturally played Exquisite Blood Sanguine Bot and our opponent uh, did us the favor of uh, of losing a bit of life and uh, <laughs> and thereby the game. Uh, we'll bring in the rest of the Leyline Bindings. I don't know what we caught here though. We know what our opponent's up to. It's Mono Black Planeswalkers. Apparently can't beat Sanguine Bot Exquisite Blood though. So maybe we got on like one Solemnity. One Enchantress's presence, try it like that. I think we keep the Ley Lines. Like, we didn't see Thoughtseize, but we also had Ley Lines, so. Our opponent very well could have had a bunch of discard in hand and just not been able to cast it. Well, that was impressive because that was about as bad as one of our draws could be and we still won. Ooh, all right. Uh, This is a pretty nice little lock hand. We get to start with the Ley Line. We got Sterling Grove, we're one land away, zero lands away from a... <laughs> Frexion on Life Solemnity with Sterling Grove Protection, which is a pretty hard lock. I don't know, opponent's deck is weird. Karn tutoring stuff from the sideboard could be, could be an issue. I think we just play another Sterling Grove. Get the lock going. Could use some card draw. Opponent, Karn gains a bunch of life. Karn eating our lands is a concern while they just straight up go for Aether Flux. Well, let's play Solemnity and Overgrown Tomb Tapped. How do they beat us though? Like they can gain a ton of life, but how do they make us die? A Bolus of Citadel. Well, we will play the Unlife. Godless Shrine, Sterling Grove number three. So opponent can like have a big Bolus of Citadel turn. Ashiok, but they can't target any of our stuff. Kaya, geez, our opponent is going off here. Blood on the snow. So Kaya, does any of this stuff matter? Not really. Yeah, that's not gonna work. 
I mean, I guess they could win by exiling our deck with Ashiok. That's a possibility. Well, let's sack a Sterling Grove. Do we need to get rid of the Boluses, Citadel, or can we try to win? Do we get card draw, or do we just get a combo piece? Yeah, let's take Exquisite Blood, I think. Draw the Exquisite Blood. Play the land, play the Exquisite Blood. So if our opponent casts stuff with Bull Assisted it out, we gain a bunch of life. All right, Tibalt. So we gain seven. Land off the top. Black Market Connections. <laughs> this is one of the wildest games. <laughs> We can't sack our Sterling Grove anymore, unfortunately, because we really need our stuff to be hexproof. Ponent, X has a land that we didn't want. There's a Bass Re... What is going on? Bass Re... Cat. Vampire the Dire Moon. And Ashiok. I mean, the way we lose is our opponent exiling our deck. That's the problem. All right, going to cash in the car and let's see what our opponent gets. Another Ether Flux Reservoir, okay. I mean, they can Rise of the Dark Realms, okay. They just, they can't kill us though, because they have to target us. So the only way we lose is by this nightmare, these nightmares exiling our deck, which will happen eventually, ooh. All right, another Sterling Grove. That's actually huge. So this means we can tutor up our last combo piece. And if our opponent does anything, they lose the game. Tainted Remedy, okay, wait, does that do something? Oh my, <laughs> yeah! yes, they did, oh, they did it. This burns us out, Tainted Remedy. I mean, we're gonna lose now, but this might be the, this might be the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> We are gonna, we are gonna lose now because now because of Tainted Remedy, whenever our opponent casts something, we lose life instead of gaining life and we can't beat the, the Tainted Remedy. Opponent Ashiok was not expecting Tainted Remedy. Opponent takes a Bassery for no value. And Emblems Kaya, okay. And casts our Leyline of Sanctity. <laughs> <laughs> we lose now, opponent goes to combat, attacks, exiles, exiles, oh, they hit both of our, okay, yeah, now we can scoop, they hit both of our sanguine bonds, I do not know what to say about that, uh, let's bring in Gideon's intervention, can't even get mad about that, like, what are the, what are the chances, that was just the most absurd thing I've ever seen, they're, Probably not actually playing thoughts. Let's go down one ley line. Let's run it like that. I mean, ley line still does something, just not enough. Tainted Rep. Who plays Tainted Remedy? Um, I mean, we're gonna keep this. It's a little slow, but we get to start with a ley line. We have a Sethus. We don't have a way to protect it yet. We would like to find a way to protect it. Ley line binding's actually good. We got our Gideon's Intervention tech, which is 1 million percent gonna name Bolas the Citadel. We'd love to just draw Sterling Grove. That would be, that would be the best. Just drawing a Sterling Grove would make this so much easier. I'll play the Sparrow's Headquarters opponent. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Play the End of the Triome past the turn. Can we draw a land or a Sterling Grove, double Sanguine Bond, and Velky. not gonna do much. Oh, it's each opponent, okay, so it actually does do something. Land, play this on green, or play this on black. So Utopia Sprawl on black. We might just Leyline Binding the Velky here to get back our Sethus. Well, that is also unfortunate. Let's Leyline Binding. This is going almost hilariously wrong. Uh, it's like our opponent somehow built their deck to beat our deck, but no one knows our deck is a thing that is possible. So I don't know how they managed to do that. Xander's Wake. We whiff on Lance. Get in with Seth is past the turn. Opponent, Cascading Cataracts. Hero's Downfall. Not good removal, but technically removal. Leyline Binding, we can't... Wow, we are running so badly here. Abonant. Castle Lockwain. Bass Recat. Off of the... I don't even know. 
Cascading Cataract and... Hey, it's a land. Okay, so we draw a land. We will play Solemnity. Wow, fires up. All right, so opponent is doing kind of nothing. They must just have a handful of removal. Gets in with the Hive and the Eye Tyrant. We kind of like to draw more lands. Utopia Sprawl. Well, Utopia Sprawl. Black. Pass the turn. We might have to lane line binding this Bastry. We can't let it ultimate. Living for a bit is fine. Ultimating is not fine. Opponent takes a Bastry. Soren. Okay. This is the wildest match. Opponent. Well, all right, lane line binding. Get rid of the Bastry. Gideon's intervention. Bolus's Citadel. Pass the turn. Uh, Teferi here of Dominaria. Our opponent's ability to actually cast spells through this is... I can't believe this is working out for them. Opponent takes up, Teferi does its thing. We draw Woodland Cemetery. Well, we will play a Sanguine Bond. Pass the turn. I mean, this Teferi is a huge problem. It probably beats us. I mean, I guess if you're gonna lose, lose creatively. <laughs> opponent gonna tuck the Sanguine Bond. Revenge of the Ravens doesn't really do anything. Going to pass. We draw more lands. Well, we will play a Sanguine Bond. Play a tap land. I mean, the big issue here is we just have no card draw. We drew the one, we drew the one at Sethus. It got killed. And our opponent has managed to just play all the colors of Planeswalkers. Despite the fact that uh, they're playing a mono black mana base, these interplanar beacons and so forth are doing full Darren Bloodcaster. Sure. Unfortunately, we know another Sanguine Bond is coming, which is bad. Opponent doesn't do anything, untaps their lance. Can we hit some card draw? Okay, well, Sterling Grove is something at least. Play the Sterling Grove, play the Sanctum Weaver, pass the turn. So if opponent wants to get rid of the Sterling Grove, they have to cash in. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep this. I mean, so we got no one life. We have part of our <laughs> Sanguine Bond combo, but uh, we still need the Exquisite Blood. We'll see. Hopefully we don't get Thought Seize. As long as we don't get Thought Seize, we have early removal in Leyline Binding. Ooh. All right, opponents. Oh, Sack. Oh, oh, there's a full combo. Okay. I think we do not. I think we're going to not Shock. We might have to Shock next turn. To get down Enchantress's presence, we have the full combo. We just have to get to it. Sack should be a lot better now because of Goblin Bombardment. That card's really good in Sack decks. We played it a little bit in Brawl, but we haven't played it in a 60 card format yet, but I love Goblin Bombardment. One of the best Sack outlets. So you play all the way back to Legacy occasionally. Opponent, tap land. More Witches Ovens. Uh, well, play the land untapped. Play Enchantress's presence. Next turn, we should have a pretty good turn. We can Utopia Sprawl into Solemnity. And if we draw a land, also Ley Lines Binding. Robber of the Rich. And yeah, that's fine. Steals a land. Sure. Hits us to 16. Opponent passes. Well, okay, so play Woodland Cemetery. Play Utopia Sprawl. Whatever. Oh, there's a Sterling Grove, too. Let's just put it on white. Play Sterling Grove, draw a card. Yeah, we can just pass. Yeah, we'll just pass. So we can pass. We can Leyline Binding away the Robber of the Rich. Draw a card. Wow. Okay, that Bowmaster's a tiny bit too late. <laughs> Missed the card draw. Uh, does this mean we have to the Bowmasters? No, don't do that. Oh, no, no, no. You gotta wait till we target. You gotta wait till we target opponent. Don't go second yet. Yeah, so I think we actually have to hit the Bowmasters, unfortunately, because we're gonna keep drawing cards. So opponent does get to Robber of the Rich. Hit us down to 13. Oh God, steals Phyrexian Unlife. That's fine, our combo still works through the Unlife, although we would have liked the Unlife. Opponent passes. Play Sanctum Weaver. <sighs> Is there any way we die this turn? I mean, I guess it's safest just to... Yeah, let's play the Unlife. 
Draw a card. Play the tap land, pass the turn. Next turn, I think we can play both combo pieces. Opponent, Mount Doom. I mean, because we're gonna have a bunch of mana with the Sanctum Weaver. The only thing we're really worried about is our opponent. All right, they don't have anything too good. We'll just take it. I don't think they have like a pump spell or something that could kill Sanctum Weaver, but you never know. A cat to go with the oven would be annoying, but not really deadly. And now we just need a way to have our opponent lose a life. We don't have the Cephas. So we draw a forest. Let's play the forest, play a Sanguine Bond, or Sterling Girl first. Oh, opponent has another Bowmasters. Okay, pings us. Yeah, that is awkward. Pangs us. Well, okay, now we have to get the lockdown. One, two, three. Solemnity. Can we make our opponent kill themselves? Because Bowmasters is not a May ability, right? And they can't target any of our stuff. This makes eight. All right, so play Sanguine Bond. What would you like to Bowmaster? I guess they can just Bowmaster their Orc. Oh, right, right, right. They can still target us. Yeah, we don't have Leyline line down. It just isn't gonna kill us. Exquisite blood. Opponent. Oh, there's the Sethus. Okay, that was the that was the missing piece of the puzzle, opponent. Pings us. Kill us if you can, I guess. If you lose life, you lose the game. Watch our opponent like tap their Mount Doom for colored mana. If they lose life, they lose the game. If we gain life, they lose the game. Oh, uh, the only thing that gets us is, well, Robber the Rich doesn't even get us because we've... They draw a ley line, but ley line doesn't actually, oh, target opponent. That actually does. If they play the ley line, then we need to find a removal spell for the, for the ley line. It actually does stop the combo because this, yeah, this target. Oh, they tapped it for colored man. <laughs> <laughs> Our opponent had the right idea. Death by Mount Doom. <laughs> oh, they tapped it. They didn't have another black source, so they tapped the Mount Doom to trigger the combo. The hilarious thing is this ley line would have actually kept them alive for a minute. We wouldn't have been able to immediately combo because of... Uh, because Sanguine Bond does target. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Oh, and they scoop at one life. Pona lets it run and then scoops right before it would kill him. Rest in pieces. Definitely coming in. I guess we can like go down one Solemnity. Maybe one Enchantress's presence. We do need to be aware of the Bowmaster. Although Leyline really diminishes its power. A Wrath seems good. I just don't know what to cut. We want at least two of the Exquisite Blood Sanguine Bonds. We don't want to cut the Unlife combo. I guess we could try to go to two Enchantress's Presences. Or we could just go without the, the Wrath. We definitely need two of these because of like Robber of the Rich or whatever. It's playing one of them, even though we can tutor it up, is just too risky. Does Solemnity do anything outside of, you know what, maybe we go one. Let's go down to two Solemnities. Let's try it like that. I feel like Solemnity, I guess it stops the Orcish Bowmaster token. That's one of the reasons I really like this deck is Solemnity is actually oddly well positioned. It hates on Bowmaster. It hates on the one ring. So it actually just shuts down a lot of the best cards in the format. So you get the extra upside. Ooh, okay. The sand is kind of absurd. So we'll start with Ley Lines, and then we can Sterling Grove into, boy, I just need card draw. All we're missing is card draw. This Ley Line should be pretty good against our opponent. Opponent, Mount Doom. Well, tap, land, go. I think we definitely start with Sterling Grove. Play the Sterling Grove to protect our Sanctum Weaver. Now we can play Sanctum Weaver and not worry about it dying. Mayhem Devil. I mean, it can't target us though, right? So that's Utopia Sprawl. Whoa, hang on, let's go white for now. We'll find black eventually. Play the Sanctum Weaver. But our opponent can't target us or the Sanctum Weaver. Fable of the Mia Breaker gets in. No blocks. Well, let's play Solemnity. This does stop the Fable of the Mirror Breaker from doing anything. We can Leyline Binding. 
Do we even care about the mayhem devil? Not really. Well, that's ley line binding. To get rid of the goblin. The mayhem devil just can't target us, so it doesn't really do much other than attack. Opponent passes. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Yeah, let's play the Sanguine Bond. Yeah, let's run out. Rest in peace. Card draw. Opponent. Wow. Castle Lock Queens down to 14. Blood Crypt. Witch's Oven. Sure. I mean, I guess they are kind of slowly killing us with Mayhem Devil here. Yeah, let's just pass. How possible is it for our opponent to kill an enchantment, I guess is the question. Because we could sack this Sterling Grove, but then we lose our protection. Opponent casts a Lockway. Maybe Solemnity is just a good card. It also hates on Fable. <laughs> it actually just, even without the lock, it actually just hates on a lot of stuff. Opponent going to pass. All right, we'll wait. Oh, yeah, we won't play the Ley Line. Let's pass the turn. Uh, we might have to lay line binding the Mayhem Devil, just because it's an attacker. Yeah, I think we do. Let's lay line binding, get rid of the Mayhem Devil. Opponent sacks it. Has to ping themselves, down to eight. <clears throat> well, <laughs> Lair of the Hydra, that's actually pretty good here. Play the Lair of the Hydra, pass the turn. And, GG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Solemnity might just be a good card. Even without the, even without the combo, Solemnity just kind of wrecks people. I think Solemnity might just be underrated in, uh, in the current meta. Game one, got the full combo. Game two, Solemnity, plus a bunch of, bunch of removal. I mean, eventually we would have comboed. At some point, we can sack the Sterling Grove. The problem is if we sack Sterling Grove, then we lose the Hexproof on all of our enchantments, and we probably lose Sanctum Weaver, and who knows what else our opponent could kill. So we want to wait until we're, like, desperate, or until we draw something else. Lair of the Hydra is pretty good, though, because we have a lot of mana, enough that if our opponent can't kill this, it's just going to kill them. So, yeah, sweet, sweet. It is Phyrexian Unlifetime, and uh, we have two enchantresses. No, well, actually, <laughs> Solemnity has been the sneaky all-star in this deck. Solemnity might actually just be a legit good card. I was going to say no combo pieces, but wow. Okay, just kidding. We have literally all the combo pieces. Well, this might be a freebie. Opponent Mountain. Tenth District Legionnaire. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Sun Petal Grove and Solemnity. Were you hoping to put some counters on your 10th District Legionnaire opponent? Were you hoping to grow that with the, with plus one, plus one counters? I have a little bit of bad news. Just, uh, just a little. The opponent, Feather. It's us. Well, uh, Frexine on life. GG. Are we done? Are we done? Are we done, opponent? <laughs> <laughs> All right, got him. Uh, we will bring in two Wraths, one Ixalan's Binding, two Leyline's Bindings. I don't know if we can fit all these. I guess Leyline of Sanctity does nothing, so that's that's an easy cut. And maybe we go uh, one Solemnity, even though it's good. I kind of want the Karmic Justice, although we're hoping they just don't destroy our non-creature spells. Yeah, let's, let's just run it like that. That's one of the upsides of this deck. <laughs> you can win the long grindy games with the Exquisite Blood combo, or you can just uh, get them with Phyrexian Unlife on turn four and or even turn three technically with Utopia Sprawl and uh, get a free win. Yeah, this is this hand looks fine. Opponent. Wow, there's the Unlife again. Well, untap land. Utopia Sprawl on black, probably. Actually, do we even want black? We'll find black eventually. Probably better to put it on white or green. White. We got a lot of green in our mana base. Opponent planes and illuminate a virtuoso. Play Sterling Grove. And overgrown tomb tapped. Opponent, sundown pass. Monastery Swift Spia. And here comes the big attack. Opponent. They are going big. I mean it's possible we're just too slow. Actually, are we? I mean, opponent hits us for a ridiculous amount. We draw. So we have to play Phyrexian on life. Play it. Why is this? 
Oh, it's a sentinel's eyes, I see. Opponent, Sunbaked Canyon, Monastery Swift Spear. They need to grow this enough that first strike gets us below zero. It's possible. They get to connive. If they have another spell, wow. Wait, do we go to nine? Nine poison? That is not dead. So we can sack the Sterling Grove. Get the Solemnity. I mean, they could still get us here. It's still definitely possible. This is their turn. So we draw it. We play the Sun Petal Grove. We play Solemnity. If our opponent can blow up the Unlay for the Solemnity, they have us. Otherwise, next turn, the Sterling Grove should lock it in. This is our opponent's one turn window. Wow, that was a fast start. Now we get to play the Sterling Grove. And opponent scoops it up. Ooh, kind of busted. <laughs> Actually, if we get Thought Seized, I'm going to be sad. But as long as we don't get Thought Seized, I like this hand. We can Utopia, Utopia, uh, Utopia Sprawl on green. I mean, because in theory, we just get to jam Enchantress's presence and then start drawing cards. Come on. Come on. If we get Thought Seized, our hand does nothing, which is bad. Hmm. I think my mouse is losing battery. We need Solemnity. Solemnity is the card, I think, that really that really locks it in against black decks. We're even we're even built to fight the black decks. With main deck ley lines, we just didn't actually have them this game. But get the unlife down. Opponent, copper line, George. Well, Sterling Grove is good. Play the tap land. Pass the turn. Kinda tempted to sack it for card draw. It might be worth it. There's the Bowmasters, sure. We could also just sack it to get the lock. Although our opponent's Jund, so they could have an answer. Getting card draws a little more brutal now that there's a Bowmasters. Oh, I think we're going to get Solemnity. Draw Solemnity, play Solemnity. Well, let's see if they can break out from the lock. Fable the Mirror Breaker doesn't do anything. Orcish Bowmasters doesn't grow the army. Solemnity is just like a straight up bomb. This also stops the one ring. <laughs> I'm telling you, Solemnity is just like straight up busted. <laughs> Solemnity is the, is the card that no one is paying attention to that is actually just secretly busted in historic. This seems like a good Karmic Justice matchup. Maybe go down one Enchantress's presence and just run it like that. It is kind of funny how much Solemnity just wrecks people. It does, it just like straight up wrecks people. On to game number two. You know what I'd really like though is a Ley Line. A Ley Line would make me happiest because this deck does play a lot of discard. I mean, we're gonna keep this. There's no Ley Line, but we're still gonna keep it. The sand is too good to pass up. Discard is annoying. We actually just have the whole finishing combo though. I guess we need another black source at some point, but. A bonnet, Blooming Marsh, and. What are we taking, opponent? What are we taking? Takes the Sterling Grove. Well, all right, tap land, go. Opponent. All right, maybe we do want to just mulligan for a ley line. <laughs> tap land passes. Well, in that case, let's Woodland Cemetery San Sanctum Weaver. I mean, it probably dies, but whatever. Blood Crypt for our opponent, Fable the Mirror Breaker. Well, we have Solemnity to shut it down. Yeah, I think we just play the Solemnity to stop the Fable from doing things. No attacks. Opponent gets in with a Goblin. Sure. Are they ramping into Shieldred? Shieldred kills us with Sethus pretty fast. Overgrown Tomb. So if we play this, that taps for three. Yeah, let's play Sethus. Godless Shrine untapped. Exquisite blood. There's the Bowmasters. So it does get to ping. But it doesn't actually make an army. Alright. Well, there goes some of our mana. Abundant, abundant Harvest. For Abundant Harvest. Abundant Harvest. For Abundant Harvest. Thought Seize. Well, that's fine. We don't have anything they can really Thought Seize at the moment anyway. Sure. Thought Seize is some lands. We gain a bit of life. 
opponent gets in, hits us. Oh, Sterling Grove is good. Let's play Sterling Grove. Draw a card. Ping Sethus. Sun Petal Grove. Go. We are pretty close to combo killing here. Opponent. The One Ring, but it gets wrecked by Shieldred. It doesn't actually work because they can't get burden counters. <laughs> Opponent gets in, makes a treasure. Solemnity is just wrecking the best deck in the format. It is shutting down all the best cards in the format. Let's cycle the Triome. Ooh, into a land, get pinged. Ooh, the Ley Line is actually pretty excellent here. Let's play the Ley Line. Oh, that Sanguine Bond. Oh my God. We are just naturally drawing the combo. I think, I think we can win next turn. We would prefer our opponent to uh, to play their last card because winning is going to involve sacking the Sterling Grove. Wow! That is, that is Solemnity Power. That is just straight up Solemnity Power. Why has no one discovered how good Solemnity is? Like everyone's talking about One Ring and Bowmasters. Solemnity lock, just locks both of them and Fable the Mirror Breaker is a bonus. If there is one thing you learn from this video, it's not that the combo is good, even though it is. It's not that, <laughs> It's not that Frank's Keenun Life is good, even though it is. It's not that Enchantra stuff is busted, even though it is. It's that apparently Solemnity is actually just really good against a lot of the best cards in the format. And uh, maybe this should be an actual like sideboard card or whatever. Like it locks several of the most played and strongest cards. One Ring doesn't do anything. Bowmasters doesn't really do anything. Fable the Mirror Breaker doesn't really do anything. That is the power of Solemnity. It is finally, finally Solemnity's time to shine. And uh, yeah, this deck was sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So what did we learn this week about our Phyrexian Unlife Lock Exquisite Blood Sanguine Bond combo deck? And overall, the deck worked pretty well. We're playing at Diamond on Magic Arena. Went four and three with the deck overall, so slowly ranking up with the deck. And the plan worked exactly how we wanted to, except it was even funnier than I expected. So the Phyrexian Unlife Solemnity Lock actually really effective in some matchups. We saw some just free wins where we like stick it on turn four or even turn three in some cases with Utopia Sprawl and our opponent just like scoops it up because they can never win. The funnier part of the deck though was definitely Exquisite Blood with Sanguine Bond where we were very concerned about like, can we start the combo? Can we find our Sethis to play an enchantment to start the combo to win the game with our infinite damage, infinite life gain shenanigans? The thing is, it turns out a lot of opponents don't read our cards and we had multiple opponents who started the combo themselves by like, like tapping a pain land or otherwise losing life, uh, taking up a Soren Planeswalker in one case, I think. So a lot of times our opponents just out of ignorance started our infinite loop and kind of lost to themselves, which made it even funnier. But anyway, that is Phyrexian on life. That is exquisite blooded Sacred Bod. The deck's pretty sweet and wins more than it probably should. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.